Now, my personal opinion, if you still have the old twin motion installed at a computer and you don't need to upgrade for any reason, make sure you just keep using it until they fix these bugs because they're very annoying. Having said that, if you're ready for the next leap in rendering technology, Twinmotion 2020.2 truly, and I mean truly, steps it up this time. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, firstly, thank you so much for joining me. If you're a long time subscriber, thank you so much for being here. On this channel, we talk about all things architecture and technology related. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and let's get on with this video. So like I mentioned at the start of this video, we're talking about Twinmotion 2020.2 today. We're gonna to be looking at all its brand new features, the good, the bad, and unfortunately, the very ugly. I've been fortunate enough to be designing some very high level, extremely confidential things this week, but it's given me the opportunity to play around with ARCHICAD 24 and also play around with the brand new Twinmotion 2020.2. Now, the reason I've prefaced this with saying the very ugly is because straight off the bat, no lies, Twinmotion crashes so much with this new update. It has driven me to the near brink of destruction how many times it has crashed on me. Every single time that you load it up, something else forces it to crash. When you're getting started, it's either the lights, the plants, the location, I don't know what else crashed it, but I swear it crashed at least 40 times in me trying to export one video. Given this was an extremely large project, it was very labor intensive on my computer. But at the same time, I've had enough time now to actually test it on a much smaller project. And again, it still crashes continuously. Now, alongside a UI refresh, some icons moving around, some logos changing here and there, it has had a huge graphical improvement. Twinmotion 2020.2 is now able to render textures in a lot more detail. We now have more details in the shadows, less blown out highlights more understanding of how the sun works, how the paths move, and how the people move. We have the ability to do so much more to make our renders look so much better. Now the PC you see behind me is a custom built 4K architecture machine. I had it custom built a couple years ago to help me get through my master's architectural studies, and it did exactly that. It was purpose built to be able to run some of the highest rendering softwares known to man at the time. Thankfully, I invested a little bit more money at the time and made sure it could future-proof itself. I've also recently upgraded the RAM and a few other bits and pieces to keep up with 2020. Now that Twinmotion has had the new update, 2020.2, I'm just saying 2020 a lot in this video, sorry guys, it is starting to struggle with that update. When I put the settings onto Ultra, it starts to lag and really, really slow down. So for most of the time, I tend to run this on either medium or high, just to get it across the line. And then when I need to export and render, I plug it into Ultra and get phenomenal results. One of my personal favorite updates in this new 2020.2 version is simple parametric and opening doors. I've always wanted the doors in my scenes to animate, especially when making videos. If you're an architecture student watching this, make sure you learn and spend some time to make high quality videos. In my opinion, it is no longer just about how good your photo rendering skills are. You have to be really, really good at video rendering as well. Clients in my industry are starting to expect it, not demand it. Anyway, the moving doors have actually added such a unique feature to this program. To be able to animate the doors so easily or to even just drop doors in from their library that are fully set up and ready to go makes these projects so fun to work with. I created a video today where the sliding door opened, the camera panned out, and it was all flawless. The door was triggered as the camera came towards, and it looked really, really good. Now, I know you were able to do this previously in twin motion versions, but it was a nightmare to set up. It still is pretty complicated though. If you are looking to animate doors, make sure you jump on a tutorial from somebody else. I'm not gonna make a door tutorial. And it takes about 30 seconds of your time to just learn how to set up these doors. But once you get it, it is great addition to all your video renders. Another feature in this update is the new phasing technique. Now yes, again, phasing was available before in previous twin motion versions. However, it wasn't this simple. 
They've made phasing so easy and so simple to use that you can phase a whole construction process from the day the truck arrives on site to the day you hand over the keys to the client if you wanted to. Obviously, it's gonna take a bit of time. You're gonna to have to spend a lot of time detailing each individual scene, but you can easily toggle things on and off and truly get a sense of the building being constructed. Now, along with the new phasing, they're putting an emphasis on the early days of construction, which means they've updated a whole bunch of construction vehicles. We have a whole new array of different construction vehicles that can now be edited beyond the generic yellow color that they had in the last version. You can now make them a little bit more attuned to your company, to your preference, or however you really want them to be. Now, they didn't just stop at construction vehicles, they went to town on the editing features of aircrafts and vehicles. There's a whole bunch of new vehicles added, but more importantly, the features that they've added to the aircrafts means you can almost model an entire airport dedicated to your brand. If you wanted to go ahead and chuck your logo on the back of a wing of an A380, you can do that now. If you wanted to custom paint the bottom neon pink and the top lime yellow, I don't know why you would, but if you wanted to, you could. Now, this isn't something that's gonna get used a lot in the architecture profession because obviously designing airports is a very niche topic in itself. Architecture is a niche already. But having this freedom and ability to create something like this is a really nice touch. Another cool feature about the aircraft is you can actually put a like button on the end of the tail or you can slap a little subscribe sticker. So if you wouldn't mind doing me a favor, make sure you smash that like button down below guys. Help this video with the YouTube algorithm and if you're enjoying it, wanna see more of my content, make sure you subscribe down below as well. Something that I'm very happy to see is the addition of 15 new trees. They haven't just gone ahead and added 15 new trees from the East Asia region. They've actually developed these trees into a three-stage maturity cycle. So now you have a sapling, an adolescent, and a mature tree that slowly ages as the time progresses. So if you are phasing, or if you simply just want different age-appropriate trees, you can model that however you want. Unfortunately, these trees are still very, very glitchy in my personal experience. I've had them, one, not want to change seasons manually. So when you go into the settings and try to change the season from summer to winter, for example, they won't change at all. Changing their age, they tend to be very jumpy. There isn't a natural progression in them. And when you decrease the quality of your render, they don't look as good. But that one's kind of not here nor there, that's expected. Now, Twinmotion has gone ahead and said that they've increased the quality of the puddle and rain simulation in Twinmotion 2020.2. In my personal opinion, I believe they've actually enhanced all of the seasons and the time of day as well. I've never seen Twinmotion so crystal clear, so, I don't know, lifelike, I guess, that it has improved so much in such a short period of time. I think since Epic Games took over and bought out the company, it has improved dramatically. Yes, it's still super glitchy and super buggy and crashes all the time, but if you can push through those problems and those errors, it truly does create a very beautiful masterpiece at the end of the day. So those are some of the best features that Twinmotion has brought out in the 2020.2 update. But with the good, obviously, comes the bad. Like I mentioned before, twin motion crashes all the time now. It's crashing on me when I add lights, when I change plants, when I go to save it, when I go to close it, which was an interesting one. Every time I try to close twin motion, it would save, first of all, thank God, and then it would crash. Definitely something to look out for if you're used to clicking the close button and waiting for the do you want to save this project little window. You're not going to get that opportunity if you hit that cross button too early. On the positive side, when you're syncing between Archicad and Twinmotion, I'm assuming it will be the same for Revit and everything else, it actually syncs a lot smoother and a lot quicker. It definitely takes a long, long time to finalize all the materials and generate the shapes when you're first synchronizing it or when you're resynchronizing it after a crash. But in between, when you're just fixing mistakes and doing real-time rendering, it works really, really well. Something that I noticed pretty quickly is that lights no longer work in the same way they used to previously. 
Now, don't get me wrong, this is a good thing because you used to have to put lights throughout your whole internal building to be able to get some sort of internal render. And lighting an internal scene is very difficult. It takes a lot of time to get it right. So usually, I'd personally just flood the whole scene. It would look terrible. Now, lighting is no longer controlled the same way. Obviously, natural daylight is so powerful that during the day, you should be able to see it inside if it's a well done design. If you put a light source in to a daylit scene now, you will not see that light very bright unless you pump it up all the way. Once it goes nighttime, then that's a different story. These lights will slowly fade on. The issue here being the words slowly fade on. When you take your time bar settings through the day and go from sunrise, mid-afternoon, sunset, nighttime, that transition between sunset and nighttime is very abrupt. It's almost instant from yellow golden hour, pitch black, lights slowly start to fade on and you see nighttime. I think this will get fixed in a hot fix very quickly, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. When you're watching this video, it's probably already fixed because that was a pretty major one that really annoyed me and I'm sure everybody's gonna have that issue because there is so many times I've done renders and there's a nice gradual sunset to fade out dark scene which you can't do at the moment. Something to be mindful of as well is if you're running it on medium quality, low quality, or whatever, you aren't running it on ultra quality. When it comes time to export and you've created all your scenes and all your videos, and you hit that export button and you're still on medium, for example, it's gonna render out these images to medium quality. That seems a bit odd to me. You'd think once you hit render, it would do the absolute best it could, but no, you have to actually go in change it to ultra and not only that you have to go back through each individual photo and each individual video and refresh that scene for it to know that you want it to export in ultra i originally exported all my images and all my videos in medium quality because my computer unfortunately couldn't handle that particular project and all the images came out blurry and garbage so it took me a little bit of time to figure out what went wrong in that rendering scene when I did actually change it to ultra and went through one by one, huge pain, but it did end up rendering it perfectly. This, like I said before, the quality of the renders is so much higher now. They've definitely set a new standard. Now by putting that emphasis on the quality, I think they've also tried to tell a story in the whole construction sequence and to create an ambience around the project. They've gone ahead and updated all the vehicles, construction and otherwise, They've updated tons and tons of people, heaps of new characters, all sorts of different color palettes and different motions that they do now. They've updated all the lighting, they've updated a bunch of furniture, all the trees. They've really gone ahead and really tried to tell the story better. You're no longer just placing one building in an empty box. You really wanna create that whole scene from the road to the curb, to the markings on the road, to the rain, the puddles, it really and truly does become a story and a narrative that you're telling. And even though this update has so many problems and crashes all the time, I still think it is a great update from Twin Motion. Anyway, that's all from me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button down below to help it with the YouTube algorithm. You'd think it doesn't help, but it truly, truly does, so I'd appreciate it if you would. If you wanna see more of my videos, smash that subscribe button down on the other side and I will see you next Monday.